Hi, I'm Mark Lawson with ECS Music Publishing, and we are so pleased today to be joined by Dwayne Thunderberg. Dwayne is a wonderful pianist and composer and has developed a wonderful series of chamber music pieces in the Morningstar catalog. So welcome, Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We actually have six new pieces in this series that are coming out, and um, I want to talk about them today and kind of let people know that they're coming and then spend the majority of our time talking about a particular set of two spirituals for cello and piano. But you have a setting of Heiferdahl for violin, cello, and piano. Uh, we have a I Wonder as I Wonder for Woodwind Quintet. Uh, how Great Thou Art for a Piano Quintet. Uh, we also have two vocal pieces uh, which are coming out, which are a setting of the Wexford Carol and Give Me Jesus, and then the two spirituals for cello and piano. So, wow, a wealth of, of options here. So, but let's start with the, the pieces, the uh, cello and piano pieces, because they're just extremely well done. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. They came about from a commissioning, actually, from Central Washington University, where I do some collaborative work. Um, I teach and coach students in chamber music. And then I also collaborate with uh, especially two members of the faculty, a violinist and cellist. Um, and John Michelle is, is the, the cello faculty member there. And he has about 17 students uh, of, of private cello. And so he's always looking for music that uh, is original, that they can be used in lessons or, or, or at least that he can perform for them. And he actually um, worked with the school to, to commission both pieces that I wrote. Well, I want to talk about the two spirituals. Uh, and I, I think that the two settings are King Jesus is a listening and deep river. And they represent such contrasting experiences of the spirituals. The King Jesus is a listening has such a hopeful, mm -hmm. exciting text. And then of course, deep river is, is deeply sympathetic and longing and mourning, mournful in a way. So talk about setting the two different kinds of things. I'll start with Deep River. <clears throat> That's the one that I really decided on first. And um, I, I knew that with the cello and especially with John's playing that the low range would be, would really be descriptive of the text, um, the, the, the richness of the sound of the cello, but, but also would be beautiful. And I chose a key to begin with and I wrote the whole thing out basically in the in the key of D major. And so the cello was in its middle range and it's still um, what I thought, you know, um, matched what I was hearing as far as I look at the text and I wanted to emulate that through the music. And John received the score and he said, Dwayne, could we do something? Could we try this five notes lower? And I'm so used to a singer saying to me, could we take it one note lower or one note higher? But when he said five, I immediately said, John, I don't, I don't think this is going to work. I think it's going to be too low. And he said, Dwayne, nobody writes as low as I want it to be for the cello, except the opening of the Brahms E minor sonata. And that starts in the low, you know, E. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he said, let's try it. Can we at least try it? So I took the whole thing down five steps. It was the best thing that could have happened to that arrangement because it took my intent of wanting that deep richness um, of, of God's grace and of God's love for us. And it just made it uh, incredible. And I, I just, I think it really made, I told him, I said, you, you should be an arranger because this is, this is what it should have been. That's great. That's great. Well, there are wonderful performances on YouTube of this that I hope people will take a, a listen to. And actually, I think we'll include a clip on this uh, interview as we go along. But anything you'd like to say about those performances? Again, we did both of them in a, in a concert last year in the, in the concert hall at Central Washington University. And um, they were recorded in that hall. And I think it gave the students a chance to hear something completely different 
Um, there, there's so much talk right now and, and really um, just observation of the spirituals and, and understanding what their history is, what the, what the text is, and how we honor that history, how we honor the text. Uh, a good example is King Jesus is a listening. I mean, this, the text of this really cries out for the fact that if nobody else will listen to me, Jesus will listen to me. He mm-hmm. will hear my prayer. And, and that's very descriptive of the time yeah. that these were written in. And um, students grab onto that, whether, whether they have a faith or not, they understand this and they really they take to it and they, um, they love to hear the description of, I think, of those texts. Yeah, I, I think our personal emotions are so on edge whenever we hear the spirituals because we relate so deeply to right. them, you know, and uh, the history. So it's, it's beautiful. Well, talk for a moment about the two uh, vocal pieces that we have coming out. Uh, the Wexford Carol and the Give Me Jesus. Um, sometimes the vocal pieces that that are published do not have an instrument with them. This is fortunate that we have these in the chamber music series. So talk about these collaborations. Thank you, Mark. The, the Wexford Carol, a lot of times I write music because we need it in our, in our church that I work in. And so they're, they're first of all written for services. And we have um, some unique instrumentation that we can draw from. And so with Wexford Carroll, I heard uh, piano with voice, and then I thought a string quartet would be nice with it. But then it's very unusual that we have a, a, an organist who plays our pipe organ at Lake Avenue, but then also he's a wonderful accordionist. And mm-hmm. so I thought, let's put solo accordion in at times with this. So it's a, it's a little bit of an unusual sound, but it's, um, I think it's a, I think it's a good sound, and so we um, we we recorded that, and there's a recording available of it. And then, give me Jesus um, again. There's a it's it's with solo. It could be a it could be a female soloist. It could be a baritone. Um, and then I thought cello would be nice with this because I just wanted a single line to go with the piano. And so often I will put in instruments that we have just to enhance it. And, and not just a company at times, but almost be equal with the soloist. Um, I, my degree is in collaborative piano. So there is this feeling that I'm not an accompanist or somebody who just is in the background, but it's, but it's an equal partnership with the people I work with. So in my writing, I try to do the same thing. So in Give Me Jesus, the cello is almost equally as important as the vocalist. And there's a lot of give and take between the two and sharing of melodies. Um, I love writing that way. Well, I actually think that's one of the things that makes your series so special, actually, mm-hmm. is that the there's meaty, challenging parts for the instrumentalists and the accompanist. It is a collaboration. It is mm-hmm. truly a collaborative art. And so I think that's one of the successes of the series. Well, thank you so much for talking about these and for writing them. We greatly appreciate it. And I think it's a great gift to churches everywhere who have very good instrumentalists. I would encourage them to take a look at this series. So thank you, Duane. You're welcome.